And this is very crucial part because if this doesn't work properly, you get a buildup of toxins, toxicity in, in the brain. The brain has to have a way of draining out these large protein molecules. And that's why I said go back to the hypothalamus. <coughs> large protein molecules can enter the brain through the hypothalamus because there's no major blood vessel, uh, blood, blood, blood brain barrier. So large toxins as well as the hormones can enter. And as you've heard before, that in other, there are other circumventricular ventriculatory organs that are in, in, the, in the brain that those, those organs themselves have no blood brain barrier either. So the blood brain barrier, even if it's perfectly intact, there's still damage from toxins as well. But we know that in everybody there's, there's, a, there's an opening. So these large protein molecules get into the brain. They have to be drained away somehow. There's no true lymphatic system in the, brain, in the central nervous system. We have to have another system. And this is it, what, what Weller and his, his co-workers discovered. And this drainage pathway is in the human as well. We don't just have the olfactory nerves where there's a pathway through the cribriform plate. There's also through the, uh, through, through the perivascular spaces around the optic nerve, around the trigeminal nerve, and around the auditory nerve. And this could relate to a lot of the symptoms that ME patients get with pressure in this area, pressure behind their eyes, tenderness, tinnitus as we've heard in the ears, and, uh, and, and soreness and pressure in their, in, their, in their mouths. And as you'll see later on, there's other signs, physical signs, of toxicity coming out through the skin because it's not able to drain off. So this is the cribriform plate. This is a, 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 a bird's eye view of the plate. You take out the brain, you can see the perforations there which allow the nerves to, to drain, the, the olfactory nerves to go through, the olfactory bulb. But you've also got blood vessels and you've got supraspinal fluid draining through this area. And this is not new. The founder of osteopathy, Dr. Andrew Taylor Still, a hundred years ago or more, talked about the, f the waters of the brain draining into the lymphatics. How he knew that, I do not know. It was a theory, but he was right. And it goes into this thoracic duct. Now, the thoracic duct is very interesting. It, most of you have learnt uh, anatomy and physiology of your doctors, and you would have learnt that uh, uh, in, in the early days, anyway, it might be ch it's changing now, that the lymphatics don't have a pump of their own that the movement of the lymphatics is through blood vessels and muscles around the lymph. That's how I was taught when I was studying and this is how most, m most of the medicine is taught and it's just plainly not true. The lymphatic system does have a pump of its own and it's in the thoracic duct. The thoracic duct has, a sm has smooth muscle walls that slowly pumps the lymph out into the blood vessels and it was discovered by, by Professor John Kinmont at Guy's and St. Thomas's Medical School and that's the, he wrote a book, The Lymphatics. He also he did work with brows to show that it was the sympathetic nerves that were causing this, 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 this conduction, this, this, this peristaltic wave up into the, into the blood, blood vessels. And it's this research that, that I put them the both together to come up with my hypothesis. Because what's happened is there's a backflow. Kinman said in many diseases there's a backflow. This in, in the sympathetic nervous system doesn't work properly, it goes into disarray and it causes smooth muscle wall contractility to go completely wrong. It then pushes some of the lymph 